the Unleash Success Podcast, where we break down the secrets of success to give you real tools and strategies that get real results. And now, here's your host, Corey Korpodian. Welcome back to Unleash Success. This is your host, Corey Korpodian. Before we get into this episode, have you guys subscribed to the podcast? If you haven't, go ahead and do it now. You can easily go to unleashsuccess.com and sign up for our newsletter where I'll send you an email when every new episode is released. What are you waiting for? Two weeks ago, we had Alex Brown on here dropping tons of tips and strategies on how to build a business from startup to scaling it and walking us through his $10 million first year journey with Dollar Beard Club. Last week, we had Sam Parr, CEO and founder of The Hustle, which is one of America's fastest growing media companies, delivering news to nearly 700,000 people every single day via email. So if you haven't subscribed, go to Unleash Success and join us now. So in today's episode, we're going to jump out of the busyness of work and life And instead of just drifting or floating or feeling lost, we're going to take a deep dive of self-reflection and look at what do we really want out of life? What are we actually fucking passionate about and what is our purpose? And I'll walk you through a step-by-step system that I've used to really hone in my purpose and to reinforce it and refine it over the years. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because over the last two weeks, my family has suffered a series of traumatic um, traumatic issues and episodes with different family members' health. My mom was in the hospital for four days. And sadly, my cousin passed away last week. Um, and it just left me wondering a simple series of questions that I had to share with you guys. I kept asking myself, you know, life is so short. Corey, What are you doing with your life? And I kept saying to myself, am I living fully? Am I living my true purpose? And if I'm not, how can I change it? Okay, so today we're going to go over a few things that I believe will help you find your passion, the step-by-step process I use to refine and redefine my purpose in life as I grow and as years go on. I'll also share with you You know, what I think is the number one biggest mistake most people who don't feel like they have purpose in life keep doing to themselves. But before we get into that, I want to share with you guys a story that caused me to literally question everything once again. And it's ironic because in turn, at the end of this tragedy, it only reinforced why I do everything I do and made me feel even more passionate and grateful to be doing what I'm doing. You see, in 2017 and 18, I've been extremely focused on my goals. You know, my business is going well. This podcast has been going incredible. You know, just last week, we had well over 500 downloads. I'm so grateful for you guys, each and every single one of you who's listening to this. And, you know, I'm writing a book. I've been writing that. It's a, an incredible book that I'm super passionate about because it talks about emotional fitness and how to apply these tools and strategies to get what we want out of life. And then last year, I did 10 motivational talks to really help others. So I've been pushing super hard to get things done. To top it all off, earlier this year, I started training for a grueling men's physique, kind of like bodybuilding competition. I used to do them four years ago before I got skin cancer. You know, it kind of knocked me out of it. And my girlfriend wanted to do a bikini competition. So I said, hey, listen, why not? We're doing everything else. Let's throw it back on there. But what I didn't realize is that sometimes when you're trying to balance all this stuff, we lose time. And, you know, what's really most important to us? To me, I want to make an impact. So my book, this podcast, motivational speaking, these are things that I feel really make an impact. But even above that, it's my friends and family, especially my family. And that's when I got the wake-up call. 
Literally, I was sleeping after training for three hours because we're doing a ridiculous amount of cardio and working out, trying to get this six pack ab thing that you need to try and win the trophy for this competition that you don't get paid for. You don't make any money. And literally, it's just like, a, hey, I look good type of competition. Wish me luck. But literally, I was woken up out of a nap, which I never nap, and I was so exhausted to my mom calling me. She was in the ER. Immediately, I knew something was wrong. And in a matter of three minutes, she told me that she was being treated for a stroke. And I said, what do you mean you're being treated for a stroke? And she said, my, my left hand fell asleep. And so, you know, I didn't think anything of it. I went around for three hours and then I drove myself to the ER. And I'm like, your left hand fell asleep. What do you mean? She's like, here, the doctor wants to talk to you. I'm talking to the doctor who's talking to the neurosurgeon through a camera on a TV in the ER. And they're telling me that my mom shows all the signs and symptoms of a stroke. Then they tell me we have to administer a drug that if we administer within four and a half hours of the stroke, it will eliminate or potentially completely eliminate the, the blood clot that caused the stroke. But if we miss that window, it'll be ineffective. The risk is that there's a three to 5% chance that her brain will bleed and all the complications that go along with that. And I said, did you guys do a scan? Is there any evidence? And they said, we did a scan, but the clot might be too small for us to see it. If we don't do anything now, she could basically be paralyzed from her left arm down. And in a matter of minutes, I'm freaking out. I go from shock to denial to how could this happen to, oh my God, is my mom really asking me to help her with this decision? And in a moment, I realized we had only one thing to do. And I said to my mom, or my mom asked me, she said, what do you think we should do? I said, I don't think we have a choice. Let's administer the medication now. I raced over to the hospital. I see my mom. She's got a heart monitor on. She's got you know two IVs in her arm. She's got these cables and wires all over her place. Things are beeping, beep, 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 beep. There's two nurses running back and forth, running tests every 15 minutes to make sure she's basically mentally with it. They're pumping medication into her every five minutes. There's doctors coming in and out, medical personnel coming in and out, and she's lying down there, and I can just see the fear in her eyes. And I break down emotionally. You know, it's, it's one thing to have a bad day, but this was real. There was a very real possibility that my mom was having a stroke. There was a very real possibility that there was something very, very wrong with her, that there was a clot in her brain and that she might never gain the use of her left hand again. And that worse, she could die or be paralyzed. You know, I am so grateful and so lucky that we administer the medication, and that she's well on her way to a full recovery. I mean, it's amazing, but she spent four days in the hospital. And this really made me think, you know, what do I want out of life? Am I living fully? Oh my God, am I spending enough time with my family and my friends? Am I really doing what I say is most important to me? Or am I just doing life? Am I just going through the motions and saying I have to do things you know, I, I'm working this hard so I can provide for my family. I'm working this hard so that I can give, you know, nice gifts or so that I can live in a nice house or so that I can do these things and contribute to society, but I'm not actually spending any time with them. You know, this was a wake up call and it scared the shit out of me. I got to tell you, I have not been that scared in a very long time. And I'm incredibly grateful that my mom's alive. And if that wasn't a close enough call to make me rethink life, rethink what I'm doing with my purpose, I got a call a week later. My cousin was running on the treadmill at 41 years old, and he died of a heart attack. This guy, I mean, I, I played basketball with as a kid. He ran a stereo equipment business, and he installed my first sound system in my car, and was always a jokester and always making fun. And, you know, um, I look back over the years and we went to this boat parade and somehow managed to be in the boat parade before the police cops told us we had to get out of the boat parade. And, and he's gone. And he's gone. You know, and it's, it's crazy because life is so short. It is such a gift. And I'll never see my cousin alive again. I'll never see him. I'll never get to say hi or bye. And it makes you put perspective on life. 
You know, you're stressed out right now because you're running late to work. You're stressed because you aren't making enough money. You're stressed because you don't have the right relationship or the best job or, you know, you're not really sure about what to do with your life. At least you have the opportunity to figure it out. And I realized that I've got to live my life more fully, that I've got to push my life to the limits in every area of life, not just business, not just money, because money is empty. Money is only a vehicle to allow you to do other things. I've spent more time with my loving family in the last two weeks in these tragic moments, creating unbelievably amazing memories that I have in years, and I'm grateful for it. And I'm not going to lose that either. Now, I'm not going to say that I'm going to work hard towards my goals and dreams because I the next thing that I want to do besides spend time with my family is leave an impact on this world to really, truly inspire and help people. You know, people sometimes ask me why I'm so driven to do that. It's because I spent eight years of my life living in pain. I spent almost a decade of my life not living. And when I finally figured it out, I became what I finally always wanted to be, which to me was successful, how I finally redefined success in my life. And to me, to share that with other people like you, that's the best thing in the world. And man, do I feel grateful. My cousin is 41. He should have lived a whole nother life. So it made me stop doing things all the time. I stopped doing and I started thinking. I started just being. And then I reevaluated. I asked myself those questions. What am I doing with my life? What are my goals? I'm not going to play small. I'm not going to downgrade my goals to others' lower expectations. I'm not going to lower my goals so that people won't be afraid that I'll get hurt. Yeah, maybe I'll get pissed sometimes that I'm not achieving my goals, but you know what? That anger for a moment drives me. And then really what I realize afterwards if I do let those emotions get out, get the best of me, is that I was using those emotions to positively impact myself and others. Is that, you know what? At the end of the day, I'm grateful that I got upset because it drove me to do more and help more people. It drove me to leave a bigger impact. What do you want out of life? What do you want to do? Do you want to go to Australia, Thailand? Do you want to go see a pro football game? Go wine tasting? Or do you want to leave some impact? You know, because when we die, when I die, all my memories, they're going to die with me. All the money I got in my bank is going to disappear. The only thing left is the impact that I leave on others through this podcast, through my book, through videos. And my book, I'm so passionate about because it's the one thing I believe you need to be to be successful, to enjoy life, to live life to the fullest. And it's what I've used every single moment of every single day, especially during times like the last two weeks under extreme stress and emotional turbulence. And that, my friends, is the power of emotional fitness. Emotional fitness helps you get your mindset right. It's the one thing you need to not only survive, but succeed in life. First of all, what are you doing with your life? Man, I tell you, I'd asked myself that question since I've been 17 years old. My dad always told me, Corey, you wanted to be a dentist. I want to be an orthodontist. I wanted to do braces. Honestly, I don't remember saying that, but it doesn't matter. I still end up becoming an orthodontist, but I kept asking myself, what am I doing with my life? And you know what? I found that the number one biggest mistake I see most people make when it comes to finding something they're passionate about or what their purpose in life is, is they sit there in this huge, vast world waiting for their purpose to smack them in the face. Do you think it's that easy? Do you think it's just going to find you? In a world of nearly 7 billion people, do you think your perfect purpose is just going to wander around and walk right in front of you like a gift and say, here, do this and you will be happy, fulfilled, and successful for the rest of your life? And that's really what the biggest mistake is. Or you know what? Some of them hope to find their purpose in their life. Like it's like it's inside them this whole time. Like the purpose of my life is inside me, but I can't find it. If it's inside you right now, where is it hiding? What dark corner of your mind is the truest purpose of yourself hiding that you cannot find it? 
the key is it's not hiding. And we're going to go over some ways to find your purpose. And the other mistake that people make when looking for their purpose is they hypnotize themselves by saying, I have no idea what I want to do, or I don't know what I want to do. And what happens is people hypnotize themselves into thinking they don't know what they want to do, into thinking that they will never know what they want to do. They spend years not knowing what to do. So what the fuck do we do, Corey? What do we do to find our purpose if all we know is we don't know what to do? Well, good thing you're listening to this podcast, guys, because I am about to tell you. Instead of waiting for your purpose to find you, instead of looking into the deep, dark corners of your mind and coming up empty, you have to take action. You have to cultivate purpose in your life. Like a farmer plants a seed to grow a crop and he waters it and nurtures it and grows it into an amazing, beautiful crop that then they can harvest. You too have to cultivate it. You've got to plant the seeds. You've got to put these seeds in the ground. And what I mean by doing that is you've got to try multiple different things in your life And plant those seeds because sometimes finding your true purpose takes time. Sometimes you've got to commit to certain things for a period of time to harvest it to see if you really enjoy that crop. What if that corn just tastes like shit? Are you going to grow it again that same way? Probably not. And that's the same way with your purpose. You know, people might say, Corey, this is easy for you. You've always been driven. You know what? True. I have been driven most of my life. You know, people think I knew exactly what I wanted in our life. They think I knew exactly what made me happy, exactly what my purpose was. And that's just bullshit. I was driven for years by one thing and one thing only, money. I did everything I could to get money because I thought by getting more money, it in turn would bring me success and happiness. And through some twisted way, I thought that was the best way to get love from the people I cared about, especially my family. And in fact, when I finally got money, it did none of those things. It was meaningless. When money didn't solve all my problems, when money didn't bring me the happiness that I so wanted, I was confused. I was lost. I was angry. You know, people look at me and say I was always driven and that's true. But the truth was that I was driven by money. And when I decided to do something, I was just so committed to seeing it through that I would never stop because commitment was such an important family value that I was taught at a young age. And I'm thankful for that, but I also wish somebody would have taught me some flexibility because I would have made some different decisions along the way. But in my family growing up, man, when you say something, word is bond. If you say you're going to do something, you do it because as a man, that's the only thing you have at the end of the day. And that's what I was taught. Now, see, I didn't figure out what my, my passion and my purpose was until I was older, until Till I found out money wasn't going to solve all my problems. And then I was lost and angry and upset and confused and depressed and all these different crazy emotions and just wanting one thing. I wanted happiness and I wanted to live a fulfilling life. So now I'm going to share with you what exactly I did to find my purpose, to find my true passion in a series of steps. And you can download this checklist. I'll include the link in the show notes so you guys can copy this and write it down and fill in your own and go through it on your own after you listen to this. If you want to know the link right now, the link will be unleashsuccess.com slash purpose. So that's where you can download the checklist to kind of go through this with me if you want to do it with me while I'm doing it or if you want to do it on your own after you listen to this. You know, let's get real though, guys. This checklist is awesome and it's, you know, looking backwards over the last decade of my life, I realized that there were certain steps that I took, but when I was in it, I had no fucking clue that this is what I was doing. I had no idea that this would lead me to my true purpose. And 
literally, I just bounced around so confused and trying so many different things. But by trying so many different things, eventually, I found the right way and now I can lay that path for you so that hopefully you can use these tools and these steps to figure your purpose out, to figure out what you're passionate about. See, I was drifting, I was hopeless, I was depressed, but what I started to do, I wrote down what my ideal life would look like. So first step, I wrote down exactly what I wanted out of life. And I talk about this all the time now, it's so obvious, but really, if you don't create a vision for what your life will be, how are you going to direct it to get there? It's like a GPS system. If you put in the United States of America, you could end up in New York or California. Hell, you could even end up in freezing cold Alaska. But if you create a crystal clear vision that says, like I did, I want to end up in Newport Beach, California, shocker, that's where I live right now. But I was so clear on my vision. And you've got to do that with every area of, of your life, with your health, with your finances, with your professional business life. With If you're starting a new business, you got to know exactly where that's going. With your relationships, so many people put their relationships aside, friends, family, intimate relationship, because they take it for granted but you've got to cultivate an amazing vision for that relationship too. So I wrote down things that really were going to make me happy. You know, nothing complicated, nothing super uh, strict either. You know, I was mainly just some basic things that I was excited about. I wanted to, I wanted to live life fully. I mean, for me, one of the biggest things about life, why I push so hard is because I love living on the edge of human transformation, you know, where we push ourselves to the next level and beyond. Don't get me wrong. I sit on the couch and watch Netflix. I mean, I'm starting Game of Thrones all over again because I forget what happened in the second and third season. Please guys, don't kill me. Okay. Khaleesi all the way, whatever. Uh, But I'm going to make it through because now it's almost over and now I can binge watch it. But I love pushing my body limits. I love seeing how strong I can get, how far I can, you know, push my body. I'm doing cold showers, ice cold showers, how far emotionally I can take myself, how far out of my comfort zone with business opportunities I can push. Where can I learn to be the best negotiator like Chris Voss, the former FBI lead negotiator, uh, lead hostage negotiator for the United States of America. When I interviewed him, man, I was like so amazed by learning from him and then using his tools in negotiations. I was so uncomfortable, but they work. And these are things that I love to do. I love pushing myself mentally, emotionally, physically. That's why I'm jumping on stage in a week to go compete for this. So to me, that was part of life. So I wanted to grow and I also wanted to inspire other people. I have done so much shit for myself that at the end of the day, I woke up and it meant absolutely nothing. I remember when I bought my dream beach house and I tried calling my parents, calling my sisters, calling my girlfriend at the time, and I couldn't get anybody on the phone. And I was just sitting there in this huge house by myself going, man, like what was this for? Like, I guess this is cool, but if I didn't have anybody to share it with, it wasn't very meaningful. And that's when I realized truly that We've got to give back. We've got to share our experience with other people. First, I like to share it with my friends and family, but man, I got to tell you, I had friends and family asking me for advice and then all of a sudden random people asking me for advice and that's when I started getting into motivational speaking, giving talks for kids and communities for you know uh, personal development seminars, the Marines, corporate outings with 500 plus people and oh my God, when I started to contribute at that level, that's when I realized that's the juice of life giving back to other people. But first, in order to give back, you've got to make an impact in your own life first. And that's what we're here today to do. We're here to give, figure out that purpose, but you got to try things. And that's, to me, I've refined this. So this is things that I want in my vision now. When I was younger, I was just trying to be the best me because if you're the best you, you're going to inspire a lot of other people around you. So start there. The second thing you got to do is you got to try a lot of things. I mean, guys, yeah, I went to dental school at 20 years old. I graduated from orthodontic residency at 26. I'm board certified orthodontist. You know, I'm super young, but I tried a lot of other things along the way. Do I wish I slowed down a little bit? Sure, definitely. But I did a couple years of acting. I was an indoor skydiving instructor, Vegas indoor skydiving. God, that was an awesome job. And I eventually ended up going through dental school. But 
it was because of my commitment and my inability to be flexible to change that I didn't step outside of that. So when I finally got out of residency, I started searching again, trying new things. I tried, you know, opening up my own business. I tried doing real estate, made some money doing some real estate flips. I started doing um, bodybuilding in the men's physique comp- competition. It's not full bodybuilding, it's men's physique. And I won a few of those. And that was interesting for a while until I stopped doing that. And then I got really into personal development. And that's when I found some of my true passions, public speaking. And then interviewing people on the podcast. God, I love learning from these amazing people. And, you know, also too, writing this book, I'm just like sharing my information, sharing my story, helping people. This has given me the juice of life. And it didn't start that way. I mean, God, five years ago, I bought a a screen printing press because I thought I was going to make a t-shirt company for crying out loud. I just wanted to make some money. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted the freedom, but it didn't work out for me. So I chose something else and I've tried so many different things. I mean, I tried a, uh, a whitening, you know, uh, subscription club business and that didn't work out. And I've tried so many other things where I poured all this money and time and energy in it and then literally ended up with nothing, nothing at the end, except the experience, except knowing what I wanted to do later on. In fact, it's funny how acting in college gave me the stage presence gave me the awareness of the audience, gave me the ability to engage at a high level And I didn't realize how much that was going to help me with my future passion of public speaking. And so everything we do eventually leads up to our true purpose, but you've got to keep going. You've got to keep looking for it. So that's number two. Now, number three is you've got to commit to some things though, right? You can't just try things once. The first time I ever tried indoor skydiving, I sucked. And if you've never met me, I hate sucking at things. You know, some people like to win. I hate losing. I just think that is the worst thing in the world. And I tried this indoor skydiving thing and I was so bad. And then, you know, these girls who are 10, 12 years old, 15 years old, who jump in with the group next to us, they're flying. No problem. I'm sitting there and I'm like 18 going, what am I doing wrong? And I hated it. I didn't even want to go back, but I am so glad I did because it was one of my favorite things in the world. But If I had never gone back, I would never realize that. I never would have got a job there. I never would have met all these amazing people and I never would have grown. So you got to commit to doing things more than once. You got to commit to trying them long enough to really harvest them, right? We, We plant all these seeds, but if you plant all these seeds, you do all this work and you never get to see the harvest, how are you going to know whether you like it or not? For me, that's typically a commitment of three to six months. You know, sometimes it needs a year but three to six months to truly figure out whether or not you enjoy that or whether it's just a hobby or you know what, something that was an interesting experience, but you're moving on. I don't want you to make the mistake of letting it consume your life though. For me, that was orthodontics. You know, I let that consume my life for 15 years. I never tried really anything else. I tried acting for a little bit, but when I went to dental school, I spent the next seven years only doing that. And so put a time limit on it. And that brings me to number four. After that initial commitment period, you got to be flexible enough to say, hey, this is either for me or it's not for me. I didn't get that down myself. In fact, I screwed it up completely. So there goes 10 years of my life. But you don't have to make that same mistake. In fact, you can say, I'm going to do this for the next six months. I'm going to be the best real estate agent in the world for the next six months, or I'm going to try to do everything I can. Or for the next six months, I'm going to dedicate my life to learning, doing, and being public speaking. Or I'm going to dedicate my life to learning, doing, and being web design. And instead of committing the next four years of your life and waking up one day and going, why did I just do that? Spend six months, work it out, tough out the tough times, work hard and reap the harvest, man. See what you got. See if you enjoy that crop. See if what you're doing is something that's going to fuel you for the rest of your life. Because if you're not passionate about it now, you might as well stop. And that's where flexibility comes in. You've got to have, have the flexibility to say, hey, you know what? I gave it a good try. This isn't for me. I don't really want to do this anymore. And then move on and have no regrets. Don't feel guilt. Don't feel regret. Don't look back in your past and wish you had done something differently. Move on. Because if you linger for too long in that state, 
wondering what you could have done to be better, what you could have done to make it work, what you could have done, regretting it, feeling guilty that you didn't try more or longer or hard enough, you might be missing out on something that's even better right in front of your face, something that's even better right down the road. Your next step or your next opportunity could be the one. It could be your passion. And that's what I've been doing, guys. I've been following these four steps for the last several years to figure out what I'm passionate about, to find out what I want, but I constantly refine it. And that's really step number five is that, guys, guess what? Nothing is set in stone. You are whoever you want to be right now. You're not who you were five minutes ago, not who you were five years ago. You get to decide today by your actions who you are. By your actions and your decisions, you can decide right now who you want to be. And that person can be different than who you were five days ago, different than who you were five minutes ago. But it's up to you. And that's really the biggest thing is that you got to reevaluate. So step five is just reevaluate your goals, reevaluate your vision, reevaluate what it is, the seeds that you've planted. Do you enjoy doing them? Because if you don't, change it. If you don't, plant more seeds. If you don't, go looking for something else that you enjoy. Go try something new. Get outside your comfort zone. Stop hypnotizing yourself to say, I don't know what I want to do. If you don't know what you want to do, go try something. Go bungee jumping. Go kiteboarding. Go do a cooking class. Go take Mandarin lessons. Do guitar lessons. Go join a boys and girls club and be a big brother or big sister. Go do something. Find what you're passionate about. You know, watch some YouTube videos, some inspirational videos, find some organizations to be a part of. Take action instead of sitting there saying, I don't know what to do with my life. Asking disempowering questions like, how will I ever find what I want to do in life? Corey, I'm just not like you. I didn't run into this on accident. I didn't crash my car into a sideline full of passions and purpose. I did it over the course of 10 years, working my butt off to choose something, trying things, failing, failing, and failing. Oh my God, I failed so many times. I've lost more money that I'm actually scared to say that it's over $100,000, but it probably is because I tried stuff. But you know what? I don't regret it. I'm glad I figured out that I didn't like it then because instead I could have been doing it for another five years of my life. I've already lost 10 years of my life and I should rephrase because it's not a loss. I learned, but I don't ever want to learn like that again. I don't want to ever spend 10 years doing something that I'm not crazy over the roof passionate about so that I can figure out that out of that much pain, I finally have the courage and the discipline to change my life, the will to find something, the desperation, the need to do it. Don't let yourself go that far down the rabbit hole. Dig yourself out right now by just taking action. If you ask yourself a question like, oh my God, what am I supposed to do with my life? Instead of saying that, I, t- I, have, I ask myself a disempowering question. Trust me, it happens. I tell myself, you know what, Corey? Shut the fuck up get back to work, do something, take action. That's what I need to tell myself. I don't know if you need to be that aggressive with yourself. You might accidentally slap yourself in the face for talking to yourself like that. But hey, guess what? For me, it works. So that's what I do. And if I ever find myself asking a disempowering question, I take action. I highly recommend you do that. I highly recommend you plant the seeds. I highly recommend you harvest them. Give it self Give it time so that you can reap the reward and then decide whether you like it or not. And of course, have flexibility after your commitment. Be flexible enough to say, hey, you know what? This is not for me. And then reevaluate your vision, your goals. Write down specifically what you say you want. Because if you don't write it down, trust me, in your mind, it gets very confusing and lost. I love it when I write down my goals and I see it because clarity is power. When I see it on the paper, I see it in my mind more clearly. When I look at it again over and over and over again, I see it even more clearly. And guess what, guys? In a couple sessions here, I'm going to be going through a goal-setting workshop that I believe has been so powerful for me to accomplish all of my goals, and I want to share that with you. And as part of that, I'd love it for you guys to go ahead and write down 
three things that you want out of life, three goals that you want out of life. Now, we don't have to know what your purpose is right now. Don't put so much pressure on yourself, okay? Sometimes we just don't know what our purpose is, and sometimes we've got to go plant those seeds reap the harvest, and then we figure it out slowly and refine it to get closer and closer to our true purpose. But it starts by having goals. So for right now, write down three goals, and then we'll go through a process next time where I'll walk you through what specifically you need to do to clarify those goals, what specifically you need to do to make sure you accomplish those goals, find out exactly what's stopping you from accomplishing those goals, annihilate that obstacle, eliminate mental blocks, and yeah, achieve your goals probably faster than ever before. So until next time, guys, live life with purpose because as I mentioned earlier in this podcast, we never know when our last breath will be. Practice gratitude. I've been practicing that every day. I've been walking out to the beach every morning, eating breakfast, and I'm shedding tears, you know, tears of sadness, tears of joy, of gratitude, because I'm just so happy that I have the opportunity to live, that you have the opportunity to live, because we never know when our time is up. We just never know when our last breath will be our last. And um, I'm not stopping, guys. I'm not stopping this podcast. I'm not stopping pushing to be the best version of me ever. I'm not in competition with anybody but myself from yesterday. You know, I just want to be better than who I was yesterday. And if every day, if I improve on something, if I learn something, if I make a mistake and I screw up, but I learn from it, I I feel like I'm improving. And as I ask myself, what am I doing with my life? What am I living for? What is my true purpose? I discovered that I'm just reinforcing what I am doing. And through that reinforcement, I became even more passionate about helping people. I became more passionate about the podcast. I became more passionate about emotional fitness. And if you want to learn more about emotional fitness, you guys can go to the website, unleashsuccess.com. Uh, there's a, a opt-in that you can get an email for a 10-day emotional fitness challenge to develop the mindset you need to accomplish your goals. And you can always email me, Corey, at UnleashSuccess.com or connect with me on Facebook or Instagram. But um, all those links will be in the show notes. But basically, I'm just realizing that this is my purpose, that I love talking about this stuff, that I'm super passionate about it, and I've seen it help so many people. I know it can help people, and I've just got to get the word out there. So that's what I'm doing. What are you doing? Go plant those seeds Be grateful for the opportunity you have to live life because life is a gift and we never know when it's going to end and stay committed enough to reap the harvest and then figure out what you like. Be flexible enough to change it. Look back at your goals and go set some goals for me, guys. Until next time, I'll see you then. Thanks so much. If you guys enjoyed the show and learned something of value, the one ask that we have is please go subscribe. If you'd like to leave us a five-star rating and review, that definitely helps us get our message out there. Because each week, I'm going to interview amazing people. And I want to be able to give you more and more tools and strategies that get you real results. Feel free to connect with me on Facebook or Instagram at Corey Corpodian, or just visit the website at UnleashSuccess.com. Remember, knowing is not enough. Knowledge alone is not power action is. Because action is the only way to get the results you want in life and truly live the life of your dreams. So go take some action, subscribe to the podcast, and get ready to unleash success in you.